you won't believe the incredible firestorm my Dave Ramsey video set off when I posted it a few weeks back. What started out as a cautionary tale about anxiety surrounding retirement withdrawal rates turned into something much, much bigger. A full-fledged passionate debate in the comments section about what a safe withdrawal rate was. And in this video, we're going to drill down much, much further, do some cool simulations and expand the conversation. Get ready for more debate and a lot more insights as I I uncover the real truth you need to know about safe withdrawal rates. Let's get after it. So the Dave Ramsey video I posted a little while back was incredible to say the least. The goal of the video was simple. I wanted to help ease anxiety and give retirees the confidence to spend their hard earned savings in retirement, giving them the knowledge that they could spend and enjoy their retirement and still likely be financially secure. However, in trying to get that message across, I instead opened up something pretty amazing. It sparked a huge firestorm of debate in the comments section about what really constitutes a safe withdrawal. Rate. And the feedback that came in was fast and furious, and it was all over the spectrum with very heated opinions both ways on whether Dave Ramsey was right or wrong and what truly defines a safe withdrawal rate. So in this Dave Ramsey sequel, I'm going to further unpack the hot topic of safe withdrawal rates and hopefully get a better understanding of what you can be withdrawing. But there's more. I'm going to go through a detailed risk analysis of withdrawal rates using a free online Monte Carlo simulator later that will hopefully give you a much more detailed perspective specifically covering essential financial risks like sequence of return risk. Now I'm going to explore all kinds of withdrawal rates comparing both conservative and aggressive approaches to hopefully provide you with some unique perspectives on the subject. Best of all I'm going to provide a link to the online simulator so that you can use it to help get a sense of what your withdrawal rate might be for your particular needs. And with that said let's move on and define what a safe withdrawal rate is. A safe withdrawal rate, simply put, calculates how much retirees can draw annually from their accumulated assets without running out of money before they pass away. In other words, how much can you pull out of your retirement nest egg and still die with money in your pocket? Okay, so now that we have defined what a safe withdrawal rate is, let's tackle the next big question. Does a truly safe withdrawal rate even exist? And I know this is probably going to set off another firestorm in the comments, but I'm ready for it. So here goes. I'm going to make the argument that there is no safe withdrawal rate that you can use that will ever be considered completely safe when drawing from your principal savings. And I know this might sound insane, but just take a moment and hear me out. And we're going to take a crazy, almost ludicrous scenario to kind of show you what I mean. So let's imagine you've invested all of your capital in the S&P 500 SPY ETF, and you're now at the end of your retirement with just one year left and $100,000 left from an original million dollar nest egg. You plan to withdraw all of that final $100,000 at the end of this year, believing that you have absolutely perfectly managed your retirement withdrawal rate. But what if between now and that final withdrawal at the end of the year, the most incredible market crash that has ever been seen happens and every single company in the S&P 500 goes bankrupt. As a result, the SPY ETF that you've invested in falls to zero. Now I know what you're all thinking, Joe man, that would never happen. And you're right. It would not only be unimaginable. I agree. It would be virtually impossible for all 500 companies in the S and P 500 to go to zero. It would take an unprecedented global catastrophe leading to a societal collapse so severe that financial concerns would be the least of your worries. And in this kind of a scenario, you'd probably be focusing on survival rather than portfolio management. But that's the key phrase, virtually impossible. And while the risk of this extreme, some would call ludicrous situation is so incredibly low, it's almost zero, but it is not zero. And therefore I would argue that no withdrawal rate can be considered absolutely completely safe because theoretically there's always a chance, however slim it may be, that something absolutely catastrophic could occur and completely derail your retirement. So this brings us to 
a critical shift in how we should think about retirement withdrawal rates. Instead of aiming for the illusion of a completely safe withdrawal rate, I think we need to focus on the probabilities of success versus failure. And in our next segment, we'll explore what withdrawal rate gives you the best probability of success versus failure, giving you a more practical framework for planning your retirement withdrawals. And to do this, as I said before, I'll use a Monte Carlo simulator that I found online that helps test various withdrawal rates just to get a sense of how plausible the withdrawal rate can be. You can find it by searching for Portfolio Visualizer Monte Carlo Simulation on Google or by clicking the link in the description below. Now, I'm really eager to hear your thoughts on this visualizer. Let me know in the comments below if you find it useful or if you think there's room for improvement. If you come across a better Monte Carlo simulator out there, I'd love to hear about it. So make sure to let me know in the comments section. That said, let's dive into our first simulation. We're gonna test Dave Ramsey's claim from the clip. He suggested that if you withdraw 8% annually while earning about 12% from investments like the S&P 500 or a solid mutual fund with an inflation rate at 4%, you should be able to sustain that 8% withdrawal rate indefinitely, like forever. Okay, so we'll start by testing a portfolio of $1 million withdrawing $80,000 annually adjusted for inflation over a period of 75 years. Why 75 years? Well, it's as long as the simulator will go for one, but this time frame also roughly covers the typical lifespan based on 2021 life expectancy data. Also, most fire movement retirements fall within this range, making it a pretty solid benchmark for assessing long-term sustainability. Canada's average life expectancy is around 82.23 years, and in the US it's nearly 79 nine years. By modeling a 75 year withdrawal period, we can encompass almost an entire lifetime for many individuals. And when Dave Ramsey referred to forever, I think he likely meant a duration comparable to a typical lifespan. I don't think he meant forever, forever. I just think he meant forever. So for our analysis, we'll use a 75 year period as a substitute for forever. We'll make the assumption that it could last indefinitely. Now you might disagree with this assumption and that's okay. But for this simulation and this video, that's what we're gonna do. And we'll begin with pre-tax returns based on historical data. Initially, we'll ignore the sequence of returns risk and later incorporate it along with historical inflation into our analysis. Since we're only using the SPY ETF, rebalancing annually won't be necessary. We'll use the default intervals and the ticker SPY for this simulation. Now let's input this data and run the simulation, allocating 100% of the portfolio to the S&P 500. Now, according to Dave Ramsey's scenario where $80,000 is withdrawn annually from a $1 million portfolio over 75 years, the success rate is 39.8% when not accounting for sequence of returns risk. This figure assumes that everything proceeds perfectly with no poor returns in the initial years. In other words, even under ideal conditions, there's still less than a 40% chance of success over a 75 year time frame. This shows that 60% of the time withdrawing 80% annually from a $1 million portfolio would not be sustainable over the full 75 year period. And thus, I would suggest that an 8% withdrawal rate could not be done in perpetuity. This is also what I suggested in my Dave Ramsey video. In fact, at the 30 year mark, which is often used for retirement planning projections, the chances of success are about a coin flip. It's about 50% between 32 and 33 years, which which means it remains roughly a 50-50 chance as to whether or not withdrawing 8% from a $1 million portfolio will be successful. These are not great odds. Next, we're going to factor in the sequence of returns risk, and this simulation will use the worst market one-year returns and then withdraw $80,000 annually after that. And after a 45% market drop, the portfolio shrinks from $1 million to $551,000. And in the best case scenario, scenario, the portfolio lasts for about 44 years. However, there is a 91% chance that it will not be successful with only an 8.61% chance of not running out of money if you experience a poor first year. So if you face a bad year early on in your portfolio, resulting in 
a 45% loss of your money. The 75th percentile of success lasts around 19 years, while the 50th percentile lasts about 13 years. Even in the best case scenario, the portfolio lasts up to 44 years, but after that, the simulated balances are very concerning. Now, let's factor in the worst two performing years to start off. Running this new simulation shows a significant decline in success rates. With this scenario, you have almost no chance of success beyond 10 or 11 years. If we extend it to the worst three years, the outlook worsens even further with nearly zero chance of success beyond seven years. And so I completely agree with the comments I got around the sequence of returns risk, but in my previous video, I didn't include sequence of returns risk because I had already covered it in earlier videos. However, for this discussion on withdrawal rates, it's definitely important to factor in. Also, over 90% of my watch time is generated by returning viewers who are not subscribed. So if you could, please take a moment to consider liking and subscribing as it really helps my videos get out to reach many more incredible viewers like yourself. Thanks again in advance for your support. Now let's adjust the withdrawal rate to the popular 4% rule, which means withdrawing the $40,000 annually. We'll use the same ticker and no adjustments. Running this simulation, we find that the success rate improves significantly. At a 4% withdrawal rate, there's an 84.19% chance of success over the entire 75 year period, which translates to a 15% failure rate. For a 30 year time frame, the success rate is around 91.41%, and over 20 years, it's approximately 96.56%. This kind of aligns with the fire movement, suggesting that withdrawing 4% of your portfolio annually could be sustainable for a long term retirement at a young age. But I would argue that only an 83% success rate with a 4% withdrawal rate over a longer time frame isn't quite sufficient. Ideally, you'd want that success rate to be closer to 90 or 95%, especially for a very long time horizon. However, once we factor in the sequence of returns risk, the success rate decreases. If the worst returns occur in the first year with a 4% withdrawal rate, there's a 30% chance of failure. With the worst three years occurring at the start, the situation becomes even more severe. By year 34, the chances of success are virtually non-existent. It's effectively a coin flip as to whether or not the strategy will hold up at 22 or 23 years. Now let's shift our attention to George's 3% rate, which was criticized in the Dave Ramsey video. Running that simulation shows a 92% success rate, which indicates a much more robust outlook for a 75 year period. Now let's apply a 3% withdrawal rate, withdrawing $30,000 annually and run the simulation with no adjustments. After 75 years, the success rate stands at 92% and after 30 years, it's around 96.62%. George's suggestion of a 3% withdrawal rate does hold up pretty well, indicating a very high probability of success over the long term. In theory, a 3% withdrawal rate offers a more robust strategy for helping to ensure financial stability throughout retirement. But let's run that same simulation with the worst one year returns. The success rate drops to 86% for 75 years, but it remains relatively strong around 93.5% for a 30 year period. So even if you experience a very bad year in the first year, a 3% withdrawal rate as suggested by George is still providing a pretty good chance of funding your retirement without significant issues. And with the worst two years, the success rate for 30 years starts to decline significantly, suggesting that if you face two consecutive years of poor market returns early in your retirement, you might be at risk of running out of funds and at a 3% withdrawal rate, this scenario could lead to failure. And it just gets worse for a bad three year return start, showcasing just how important it is not to have any significant losses starting out in your retirement journey. Now, just to see if we can get that perpetual rate that Dave Ramsey is talking about, let's take a look at a one 1% rate of withdrawal, which isn't realistic and kind of ridiculous, I know, but why not? With a 1% withdrawal rate, which means you will have to save an incredible amount of money, the simulation shows a near perfect success rate. If there are no poor market conditions at the start, you have a 99.73% chance of never running out of money. According to this simulator, it's almost impossible for you to deplete your funds. Even if you encounter the worst market conditions in the first year, the success rate 
remains exceptionally high at 99.75%, showing minimal impact. With the worst three years, the success rate slightly drops to 97.34%, and despite three years of severe market downturns, you still have a very high probability of sustaining your withdrawals for 75 years. What about the five worst years? Well, when we extend this to the worst five years, the success rate drops to around 76%. However, over a 30-year period, you still have an 82% chance of success, and the simulation indicates a 90% chance of success over a 20-year period. Even accounting for the worst five years of market performance, this means that you could experience a 9% chance of failure during that time. But the likelihood of depleting your savings is very low. The Monte Carlo simulation shows that even under the most severe conditions, a 1% withdrawal rate offers fairly decent protection and a high probability of maintaining your funds over the long term, even though a 1% withdrawal rate is ludicrous and I just wanted to be extreme with the video here. So in a nutshell, sequence of returns risk is a critical factor, and I would say the critical factor, especially if you encounter a rough start with one, two, or even three bad years in the market. And the truth is, nobody can predict whether you're going to face significant drawdowns right when you begin withdrawing for your retirement. And this is where having an emergency fund or having some sort of non-correlated assets to the markets becomes essential. If you can weather those tough years without tapping into your portfolio, I would suggest you greatly increase your chances of financial success over a 70 to 75 year time frame, which is likely far longer than most people would plan for. And with all of this said, I'm particularly interested in your opinions on the free portfolio visualizer and Monte Carlo simulator I've used. Do you think these tools would provide provide better insight into managing your own withdrawal rates and strategies, or are there any better simulators out there? Please share your experience and thoughts in the comments below. I'd really love to hear about it. So here's the bottom line. I don't think that there is any withdrawal rate that can be deemed completely safe due to the unpredictable nature of the markets. But understanding the probabilities of success versus failure in withdrawal rates can provide a more realistic approach to planning for your retirement. Even though I use what seems to be a pretty cool tool for this video, please don't rely on any free online Monte Carlo simulations alone to guide your retirement planning. While these tools can offer some insight, they are absolutely no substitute for a fairly accurate and reliable plan customized to your specific needs built by a qualified investment advisor portfolio manager with professional financial planning software. This combination can help ensure that you get expert advice and precise projections tailored to your unique needs. Now, do you want to see why a lot of people roasted Dave Ramsey, or maybe you just want to see my latest upload? Well, I've got everything all queued up and ready for you. Click here for more amazing financial insights. I'll be waiting. We'll see you soon.